Hello. Today I'm going to show you uh, how to monitor your system if you're a beginner. Um, I shall be using the app called Open Hardware Monitor. I know a lot of people like HW Monitor or HW Monitor Pro. I prefer this one because it's free and uh, it includes the feature of plotting the data over time. I will show you some examples as to why that is important. I'll show you how to download it. If you know how to download it and extract the files, then you can skip about 20 seconds maybe then i'll show you how to set the program to run on startup and how to collect the data and how to actually read the graph because to some people the graph might just be a complete number job so yes let's get right into it hello so welcome into the computer i feel like we're missing something so let's fix that real quick and it's fixed hello it's it's me i'm here to ruin your day again so next, what we want to do is search for the app that we want. And that would be um, open, oh, damn it, open hardware monitor. If I can type, I can. Wonderful. So um, go on to the open hardware monitor area. We download the open hardware monitor thingy. And it's here. I'm just going to quickly take it out of the folder and put it on the desktop. I assume you're not good. Right, hello. So it's here now. I moved it onto the desktop. So it is now a compressed file. To decompress it, what I want to do is just extract all. I just want it on the desktop so I can delete this part. Okay, so I'll extract. And here it is. So I'll get rid of that. I don't want it. So I'll just get rid of that. And I open how to monitor. And this is it. That's the app. You run the app whenever you want to. Uh, when you click on the app, Yes, you want to allow that. It's nothing dangerous, just need the permission to actually access the data from the CPU and GPU and all the other things. So it's now on. All right, so once you once you accepted the permissions, you are in here. This is open hardware monitor. You can see the clock speed, CPU, temperatures, CPU core, power draw, and all that. And all that fancy stuff that we want to know about. So first thing first, what you want to do is enable plot. Um, I have it set here for me because it's easier for me, but for you, if you wanted to move it, so I, I assume you, uh, it appears to you as a window. So if you want to change that, you go into options, plot location, and instead of window, you select right. So that's fine. I have selected all the core uh, clock speeds, and that is because if you've seen my other videos, I tend to disable or enable boost when I need to. So that's fine. I'm going to change this to five minutes. So right now I'm here, as you know, I am recording the screen, running a few apps in the background. And well, you can tell the temperatures for yourself. You can see them here. So there is no average temperature. I will explain why that is not so relevant at this point. Even if you had it, it wouldn't really tell you too much about your system. Just uh, hang on to that. Next. So you want to start it on Windows because when the app is closed, it doesn't actually monitor as it doesn't have access to the permission you've granted. So what I normally do is run it on Windows Startup and select Start Minimize. So as soon as it starts, it's just there running in the background, monitoring for you, you don't have to do a thing. I have this now, this is the graphs that I have. I have selected the CPUs, I've selected the CPU temperature, I have selected the CPU power draw down here. And I also selected the GPU core clock speed, which is the faint green line here, and the CPU temperature, which I have plotted right here. So some handy tricks about the graph. You can move the graph. Graph. You can use the scrolling wheel to zoom in and out. Sometimes you zoom in and out, zoom out so much that it's then hard to come back. To return to your default uh, position, what you want to do is just click twice on the graph. So double tap, and it shows you all the data available within the last 24 hours. If there is no data within the last 24 hours, maybe there is data within the 16 hours, then it will just find the furthermost data within the 24 hours and just stop it there. Then you just go on to, so right click. I have stacked graphs here. Um, if I remove that, it's just ugly. So time window, and depending on what part of the graph you want to see, uh, right now I just put it on five minutes. There are a lot of other things you can check here. I do feel like HW Monitor is more comprehensive in terms of how much data you want here. But if you're a beginner like me, then you definitely don't need that much. So here is the main part that is reading the graph. I'll just speak about the clock speed here. Temperatures, you know what the temperatures are. 
uh, and then the power draw. Power draw tells you what, what, how much power each component is picking up. So these are the three main things I personally look at to monitor my system. Everything else is for enthusiasts. Yeah, I, I know you. Let's look at an example of a screenshot of a session that I did uh, over over a few hours. So uh, let's look at that. Okay, so I have here a screenshot of a session that I that I had recently. So this is just over a two hour session and I was gaming. So in the first part of the first graph, we see that the clock speeds sort of shoot very high up to 4.3 or towards 4.3 gigahertz. And you can see the temperatures are quite spiky. So the reason why I tell people do not look at the max temp only, that is because you can see here, this is a very worrying temperature. What people don't know is that that temperature has been reached for a very, very short amount of time. And you can see, I think the peak is about here. If you want, you can put the max fans on. And when you game, well, the game I play is a Genshin Impact. So uh, you you can make out how intensive that is uh, according to your needs. When I play that game, the average temperature, if I put the fans to maximum, goes between 75 and 80, which is lower than what you see. Next, I'm going to talk about temperature here. You can see the temperature actually did go up, but it really plummeted down very quickly. That was just very, very short amount of time. That is not a problem for the CPU, you can easily handle that. As long as it's not sustained, it's fine. The CPU uh, temperatures sort of hover between, and then you have the occasional spike, that's fine. Uh, the GPU temperatures are pretty under control, uh, they're between 60 and 70, which is fine. Uh, in this portion of the game I was doing, I was idling I think, or maybe I went to have some food, I just closed the lid. And then I resumed the game, and then I decided, you know what, I might make this into videos. And then I stopped playing here, and you can see the GPU then obviously wasn't under use anymore. So I specifically put the Turbo Boost on to show you uh, what would happen to the temperatures. I normally play with the Turbo Boost off, which really does not affect the performance when I play uh, this particular game. And the temperatures are much, much lower. Uh, so there would be between 60 and 70 for when the Turbo Boost is off. Power. The power draw here obviously relates to the power consumed by each component. The 1660Ti has a maximum power draw of 80 watt uh, for this model here. The CPU usage is meh. It, it doesn't reach up to, I think it, it should reach up to 45 um, watts of uh, of power consumption, but you can push that if you use Ryzen controller. I don't personally use it as I don't do anything that demands the use for it. Okay, so before you start bashing my laptop for having terrible thermal performance, I will show you what happens when I put performance mode on and the fans at maximum speed during the gameplay. Same gameplay, as in just, you know, exploration, casual fighting here and there, and, you know, it averages out, so that, that's the important part. Um, so if we go back, uh, this is here. Okay, so this is one session. The data here has been reset. As you can see here, it says that, um, so it would be for a period, um, sort of in this area. I had to move it back because I did another session after that. Uh, in this area here, the computer was, uh, uh, data here was reset because the um, program was closed. And you can see that from the weird line that continues here. So yes, um, so I'm going to disregard this area because obviously you can see here the maximum processor clock speed is definitely not just 2.9 gigahertz, you can see push above. So this is for a later session. So here, performance mode with the fans at max speed and turbo boost enabled. So we'll be looking at this area here. You can see the clock speed were pushed to the, to the limit here. And what I wanted to show you is the temperature. So temperatures, if the maximum fan speed is enabled, are very, very reasonable. So you can see here temperatures fluctuate uh, between <laughs> below 60 and above 80, but generally they stay between 60 and about 70 degrees, which in my opinion is pretty nice, considering that the GPU, although the GPU is not pushing um, to its 80 watt limit because it doesn't need to uh, mostly. Yes, so this is this is a gaming session here. Uh, the CPU is allowed to push its uh, its power, uh, although not to the maximum TDP allowed because it's not required in this particular scenario. Uh, but yes, this is just to prove that although before you saw 104 degrees Celsius, this doesn't mean that that's the performance of the laptop. Uh, the average temperature counts, and if you enable the maximum fan speed, then of course you get 
uh, much better thermals. Sorry about the lighting. So this is an example of what happens when I do the same gaming session. However, this time disabling the turbo boost as well as leaving it in the default mode and not in performance mode. And you can see the temperatures are very, very nice. It's over about the 60 degrees Celsius mark here. And um, you can see the CPU is very much pushed to its um, base limit and uh, and the GPU has no problems maintaining its maximum clock speed. The dits that you see, even in the other graphs, um, there are periods where I wasn't doing anything to intensify the game, I was just looking at the map, all sorts of sorting out the characters, and you can especially see that in the last part here, uh, moving the thing instead of the mouse, the last part here between uh, 10 and 15, and yeah, so this graph here and got reset it again because I accidentally closed the program. So the maximum CPU temperature is not 68. It peaked around here. This is where I restarted this. So at this point here, the fans were sort of off. So as soon as it touched this temperature here, um, it returned to the fan. And you can see the temperature then levels off again toward uh, the 60 degree mark. So this is really good. If your game is not very CPU intensive, then this is a great way of utilizing your available power. As you can see, uh, the GPU still gets all the power required, whereas the CPU is the one that is uh, power bound. So I don't know how long I've been going on for. Oh my god! So yes, um, this is this is all you really need to know, really. If you've made it to this point, thank you. I will be releasing more videos in the future about how I set up the laptop. So stay tuned if you want to hear about that. Yeah, have a good one. Good luck monitoring your system.